Hi everyone, I'm John Fenzel, and if you've heard of the Bedford Boys on D-Day, you may know the story of Colonel Charles Cannon. Cannon was the commander of the 29th Infantry Division's 116th Infantry Regiment, the same regiment that landed on Omaha Beach in Normandy on D-Day, June 6, 1944. He joined the Army on May 23, 1919, and in 1921, as a sergeant, Cannon entered the Army's first preparatory school that allowed soldiers from the ranks to attend West Point. He graduated from the Military Academy in 1926. Before World War II, he served in the Philippines and in Shanghai, and he gained a reputation as a very strict disciplinarian, but also just a tremendous leader of troops. In 1942, as a colonel, he took command of the 116th Infantry Regiment shortly before it sailed for England. Soon, Canham's 116th Infantry Regiment, alongside the 1st Infantry Division's 16th Infantry Regiment, were chosen to be the first to land on Omaha Beach on D-Day. Shortly after hitting the beach, Cannon was shot through the wrist, but he refused to be medically evacuated, and he moved his men off Omaha Beach on and inland. Cannon's soldiers remembered his profanity on the battlefield and his own disregard for his own safety. They saw Cannon walking upright along the beach in the face of enemy fire, and one of his men on Omaha Beach said, I got the hell out of there and moved forward. I was more afraid of Colonel Cannon than I was of the Germans. For his actions on Omaha Beach and the fighting that later took St. Lo, he received the Distinguished Service Cross. That's our nation's second highest honor, right below the Medal of Honor. Canham was promoted to Brigadier General and was assigned as the Assistant Division Commander of the 8th Infantry Division. Now, some of the most bitter fighting of World War II in France centered on the city of Brest, whose port facilities were essential to sustaining the Allied armies. Just about two months after the Allied landings at Normandy, General George Patton's 3rd U.S. Army isolated the Germans on the Brittany Peninsula and the U.S. 8th Corps was diverted there to secure the port before the Germans could destroy the harbor facilities, much like they had done in Cherbourg. After long, hard house-to-house -house fighting, our 8th Infantry Division captured the headquarters of the German Lieutenant General Hermann Bernhard Ramke, a leader of German paratroops. Canham confronted Ramke to demand a surrender. Ramke was apparently insulted that he would need to surrender to an officer of lower rank. Stalling for time, as his last report from Fortress Brest was being wired to Berlin from an adjacent room, Ramke demanded that Canham show him some credentials as a condition of his surrender. Canham shook his head slightly and gestured towards his well-armed, determined, but also absolutely exhausted American soldiers who had accompanied him to witness the surrender. In reply, Canham said simply and without any hesitation, these are my credentials. Now, an account of this event was reported in the New York Times and they reported this spontaneous statement that a combat leader who had given the greatest tribute ever paid to the real power of the American army, the individual soldier. You know, credentials take on a lot of different forms. They could be orders, a, an academic degree, an assignment, or a commission, but the bottom line is that they offer evidence which attests to one's authority, confidence, or credit in a position of our nation's armed forces. They tell people who we are and what we're made of. Brigadier General Charles Cannon knew exactly what credentials were, and rather than show a Nazi general a piece of paper, he didn't hesitate to put his soldiers on full display as the most compelling example of his own credentials. After the war, Cannon was named Assistant Division Commander of the 82nd Airborne Division and later became the Commanding General of that division. He was also the Commanding General of the 3rd Infantry Division and the Commanding General of the 11th Corps. Major General Charles Cannon retired from the Army in 1960 with 41 years of service. He died on August 21st, 1963 at Walter Reed Army Hospital at the age of 62 years old and he's buried right here at Arlington National Cemetery in Section 30, Grave 535. Let's go visit Major General Charles Cannon. So he's buried in pretty close proximity to a lot of other famous folks. You've got uh, General Omar Bradley all the way at the end, and then right over here is William Howard Taft in the trees there. But uh, Major General Cannon is right here, he reads, Two stars, Major General Charles D. W. Cannon, Major General, United States Army, 1901 to 1963, with his beloved wife, Alma B. Cannon, 
1902 to 1983. And then on the back, the Canham name. Thanks everyone. If you enjoy this account of one of our nation's great leaders, please like it and subscribe. This is just one story and there are many more to come. I'm John Fenzel at Arlington National Cemetery and I thought you'd like